The Vice President of the United States took a teleconference with the 10 conference commissioners in FBS plus Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbick. And what we found was the commissioners have dug their heels in on one item of business. And that is, will we have college students on campus? Because if we don't have college students on campus in the fall, we are not playing college football. So there's a lot to unpack here, but that's the shot, right? And the reason there's a lot to unpack here is because college football still operates under the NCAA model and this sham called amateurism, where they think this thing called student athlete holds up. It is slowly eroding. It's getting closer and closer to going away, but it still is very much in place right now. When the president of the United States had teleconferences with the sports commissioners of professional leagues, he had them from the WNBA to the NHL to the NBA to Vince friggin' McMahon in the WWE. Didn't have a representative from the NCAA because it does not really factor in. And you can negotiate your labor environment in those professional leagues. College football players, college students cannot do that. They have no say over that. Again, this is why you probably would not have seen, and I'm glad they actually said this, college football without college students, because then you open up yourself to all sorts of legal liability and it's a bad look because if you give college football players special treatment, right, because you want them on campus and you have to take care of them in a different way, the rest of the students in that student body for which they go to school with be like, wait a second, time out. One, you're putting those players in harm's way. Two, you are actually demonstrating at a time of great panic and great pain that college football players are what we all thought they were which is a cut above. They stay in the better dorms. They eat the better food. They get the free gear. All of these perks that come with being a college football player. Never mind, many of the kids are up 4, 5 a.m. in the morning doing workouts, going to class, going to meetings, going to class, going to practice, going to class, going to study hall, get up, do it all over again. In some ways, it evens out. But in other ways, I have thought for years that college football players in particular, but college uh, athletes that can perform uh, the revenue generating function need to get some of that revenue, right? So we hear Pence did a lot of listening, which I applaud him for. And the commissioners did a lot of the talking, which is to say, these are our fears for how this thing is going. And we have governors particularly in in Democratic states, and I don't mind saying that, that aren't necessarily enthusiastic about the idea of sports as we know it happening this year, right? California Governor Gavin Newsom said, hey, we're probably going to need something like a miracle for the sports leagues to start on time, and I don't anticipate allowing that to happen. And he is working in conjunction with Oregon and Washington State on what they're going to do. Meanwhile, here in Oklahoma, Governor Stitt has extended the shelter in place or stay at home order to May 6th. But we have some data to show that what we're doing right now is working. What we don't know for certain and what nobody can say is that we are going to be done with this on a certain day. Because we all anticipate that even when folks are allowed to leave their homes... And some businesses are gradually allowed to reopen. We're still going to be operating with an abundance of caution, which is another way of saying the idea of having even 5,000 people in one building together is a non-starter this summer. And I get that, right? Because the public health officials who make these decisions have also said, look, I love sports too. I want to be able to go to these games too. But if people are going to die... We cannot say that we're going to open up these various arenas for these churches of sport. Meanwhile, we have actual churches that are suing their governors because they cannot congregate. And many of those churches depend on the tithe and the offering to function, right? This is, this is a form of revenue for them. And at these places of worship, it gets real dicey because I know that there are people that wanted to go to Easter Sunday service. And didn't care much about the consequences to themselves 
of going to that because it means that much. And, and I, I get that. I also get that going to these games in, in August and September and October and November and December are also, whether you want to admit it or not, a thing that people worship at, right? Anything that you are willing to sacrifice your time and your effort to do is something you value. The idea that I really want to discuss as it relates to Pence and this this meeting is that they had it, right? That they had this meeting in April because a couple of weeks ago, this was a topic that I did not even want to discuss because a couple of weeks ago, I expected the Chinese Basketball Association to be playing. They've since pushed back to perhaps past May. Right now, our best hope at what we know as organized sport and what we value in the sports world at a high level is the Korean baseball organization deciding that it's going to go ahead with something like spring training and then try to start its season around the beginning of May. But South Korea was also way ahead and further down the road than we were. They were also better at putting in safeguards than we were. But even as they are trying to go about life, they have this very thin line that they are walking of we're going to try to go about life as best we can. But if something happens, we're shutting it all down. We're starting all over again. And that's the thing that college football commissioners said we don't want to happen. That is the worst case scenario for us, that we could start the season and then have to halt the season. That we can't have. We would rather just push it back and continue to push it back until we know for certain that it is safe for us to go out. And if that's what you're doing, it feels as if you're going to need a vaccine or what people are calling herd immunity for these things to go over. And we have polls to show that many Americans have said, I don't feel comfortable going to these large sporting events in the current climate, even in a couple of months. Now, I really would love to see the sample size. I would like to see where those are coming from, but I'm gonna go ahead and venture an educated guest and say, there are people in the South who don't care about the health consequences as much as they should. And there are people that live here that don't care about the health consequences as much as they should. I think that some of this has to do with where you live and what your economic situation is right now. Because if you ask most people what they want to do right now, it's work. Job report said earlier today, Thursday, 22 million people so far in the United States have declared for unemployment benefits. 22 million out of 327, 328 million, right? And about 270 million of that are folks that are eligible to work, right? It's really the suck. And anything that looks like you could get back to work or anything that looks like getting back to something like what you knew of as normal in February is where most people's heads want to go. And having to really balance loss of life with the economic downturn is not a calculus anybody wants to do. But I continue to say, you're important. You being around is important. But I also know that you needing to pay the bills is also important. Because that's the conversation that people are having, right? Do I do I want to lose my house over this? No, no. And nobody wants you to. And that's why this is a difficult thing to talk about. Because when you localize it to the person, their priorities are are very clear. And when you localize it to the government, their priorities are very clear. And then you have things like college football, sports, entertainment caught in the middle, right? Because we're talking about perhaps a catastrophic end, not just to sports, but perhaps to the entertainment industry as it relates to movies. I mean, the concert... The, uh, man, the, the concert economics of this are cratering. I mean, the idea of going to a concert is that thousands of people can be in an arena at one time. I don't see how they're going to come back from this either. And knowing that this is where a bunch of our money already goes, where else would it go once you get it? Like, the folks that are complaining about getting their stimulus checks, one, 
shut up. Two, I never knew anybody that complained about getting th free money. And if it's how you feel, then just give it back. And three, hey man, at this point, a smile. Anything that can give you a smile. And talking about college football gives me a smile. It's one of the things that I really love. But I continue to look at how the government is choosing to go about this and who they're choosing to consult. And I say, at least they're consulting people. At least they're talking about it out loud. At least there are contingencies that are being discussed because you always want to have options. And that's the thing. Everything is on the table. And by that, I mean, there is no such thing as a bad idea right now. We'll lampoon it. We'll make fun of it. Major League Baseball on your bio doom. Hello. But you need to have those ideas. You need to have those thought processes because even from a bad idea can spring a solution, right? Maybe it forces somebody else into another direction of thinking. And maybe between now and then something does happen, right? And we get a wholesale just stop in the number of hospitalizations and perhaps our sheltering in place, our staying at home has a greater impact than many folks could have predicted. But Bowles be coming out and saying, nope, no college football. Also is him, is him saying, hey, uh, be prepared for everybody not to make any money. Be prepared for everybody to not have what they want or need. Be prepared to slash your budgets just so you have something to function with by the time we come back because that's where this is headed. Companies across the world are really just trying to hold what they got for as long as they can because they're going to be not just your men's soccer team or your softball team, but your local business and even your larger business that ain't going to come out. You're going to go to get something to eat somewhere and that place ain't going to be open anymore. You don't want to see that with college football. You don't want to see that with, well, you won't see that with the NFL. They just print money no matter what and they got a draft they're holding but I assure you that's going to happen to others. Like, for instance, the Women's Soccer League is going to have a really tough time with this. And the climate for which the United States women's, women's national team is still going to go through with their court case has totally changed, right? It's all going to be really interesting. But if you can continue to hold what you got, if you can continue to take care of yourself, if you can continue to take care of your family, and you can continue to push for hope, I think that's the best course of action, right? I think just trying to go from day to day and make it work is the best thing that we can do. While talking about contingencies and plans and staying right here, let's get through the rest of April, then let's evaluate May. And as my mom would say, eat an elephant a spoonful at a time.